Coming up on DTNS, Unreal Engine 5 looks gorgeous and is generous. Facebook gives money and benefits to moderators after a lawsuit and things nobody should be doing on a video conference call. Stop. This is the Daily Tech News for Wednesday, May 13th, 2020 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Redwood, I'm Sarah Lane. In Salt Lake City, I'm Scott Johnson. And I'm Roger Chang, the show's producer. We were just uh, taking a look at devices, both old and new, from Sarah Lane and Scott Johnson, including the Magic Keyboard, and talking about our love for very small and very large things. If you want that wider conversation, you got to get the expanded show, Good Day Internet. Become a member at patreon.com slash DTNS. Let's start with a few tech things you should know. France voted to approve a law on Wednesday which requires la large tech platforms to remove pedophile and terrorism-related content within an hour or face a fine of up to 4% of global revenue for the company. Other content defined as manifestly illicit must be revamped within 24 hours. Wow. Sony announced during its earnings that PlayStation 5 is still on track to release uh, in time for the holiday 2020 shopping season. The company also does not see any major problems in game development for the platform. Sony reported a 57% or 57 quarterly drop in operating profit due mostly to a drop in consumer electronics and gaming spending, but less than it uh, could have been as gaming sales have picked up in the final month of the quarter and people increased gaming spending because of the lockdowns. Instagram announced in a blog post it's rolling out new features designed to fight online bullying in conjunction with Facebook's release of its May Community Standards Enforcement Report. We talked about that report yesterday. Users can now delete comments in bulk to reduce negative interactions and control who can mention or tag them with a choice of everyone, only people you follow, and no one. Instagram also will start testing pinned comments to help users set the tone for their account and engage with their community by pinning comments to the top of threads. Alphabet's Loon has signed a deal with Vodacom to deliver balloon-based internet to Mozambique. This is Loon's second commercial deal. The first is in neighboring Kenya. We talked about that on the show recently, meaning that balloons can be shared across both markets because the countries, you know, they're near each other. Loon will become and uh, will start installing ground relay infrastructure in the Mozambique provinces of Cabo Delgado and Niassa and bring flying balloons to train algorithms for stable positions over Mozambique, as well as switching to Kenya service and back as they float between the countries. Pretty the cool. information reports that Mark Lavoy, who was responsible for the Google Pixel cam, left the company in March, notably following the departure of Pixel general manager Mario Queros in less than a year. The upcoming Pixel 4a is reported to cost $399 and may launch as part of a live stream Google is hosting around the Android 11 public beta on June 3rd. However, the information notes uh, disappointing Pixel sales. Only uh, 2 million Pixel 4 sh uh, units shipped over the last six months uh, that it was available. And that, according to IDC's estimates, it had just 3% market share of the U.S. smartphone market last year. Don't you listen to them, little Pixel. You're fine. Uh -oh. Dell funny. announced new XPS 15 and XPS 17 laptops. Both models now have 1610 display ratios and... All USB-C ports. We were, we've hit the USB-C generation of hardware. The XPS 15 has new 10th gen Intel processors, models with the GeForce GTX 1650 Ti Max-Q graphics, along with a 15.6 inch display with a more than 4K 3840 by 2400 resolution. Has two Thunderbolt USB-C ports, one USB-C 3.1 port, and a full-size SD card reader shipping today, starting at $1,300. Dell claims the XPS 17 and its 17-inch screen is smaller than half of all 15-inch laptops because of its thin bezel. It also comes with either the NVIDIA GTX 1650 Ti Max-Q or the RTX 2060. It has four Thunderbolt ports with USB-C, a full-size SD card reader, and vapor chamber for chip cooling. The XPS 17 will be available this summer, starting at $1,500. You thought Dell was done? It is not. But first, starting May, May 18th, Uber will include an online checklist of things like wearing a mask, washing hands that drivers and riders will both have to answer before a ride gets started. You know, make sure everybody's on the same page here. Uber will also limit the number of passengers allowed in a car and add a face mask verification feature to the driver app. 
So basically, you're scanning your face and making sure that it's actually there. Riders, drivers, and Uber Eats restaurants will also have the option to report unsafe behavior. Drivers and riders who cancel trips for unsafe behavior will not be penalized. Yeah, Uber went and announced these uh, and disrupted our beautiful transition from all those Dell XPS business laptops uh, <laughs> to a bunch of Alienware laptops. Tell us about those, Sarah. Oh, I'd love to. Dell announced a new Alienware Area 51M. M17 and M15, they're all gaming laptops with Intel's 10th gen processors. The Area 51 MR2 has options for Intel's desktop processors, including its Core i9 10, uh, 10900X chip with 3.7 gigahertz base speed that can boost up to 5.3 gigahertz. GPU options include the RTX 2080 Super and the AMD Radeon RX 5700M. Like the first Area 51 M, you can use the Dell graphics form factor to upgrade your laptop's GPU later, although the R2 modules won't work on the R1. There's also faster RAM options in various NVMe and SSD storage options, as well as the display with a 300 hertz refresh rate, 3 millisecond response rate, and 500 nits of brightness at 4K. The Area 51 MR2 is available on June 8th, starting at $3,050. The other 10th gen Intel models are the Alienware M15R3, starting at $1,500, and and the M17 R3 at 1550 coming on May 21st. So bunch of new laptops from Dell, uh, both the XPS uh, series and and the Alienware series, and uh, the Alienware series, Scott, just beefing up the specs, really. Yeah, the speaks are pretty, or the speaks, the specs are pretty beefy, um, or beffy, <laughs> is that where I was going there. Uh, it's pretty impressive. I wish the name was different. Uh, MR2 sounds like the car I owned in high school. My Toyota. <laughs> oh, you had an MR2? I loved those. Yeah, that was a great car, and I loved it. Broke struts <laughs> all the time. But it was fine. But um, overall, these are really beefy specs. These are going to be machines that are going to last you a very long time uh, and do a lot of really heavy lifting when it comes to modern gaming on PCs. And I don't think you're going to need one of those modules until they have another model out that won't use the old modules again. So... Those modules are, I, I'm kind of up and down on those. On the one hand, I'm like, yes, finally, these are some reasonable ways to keep your notebook uh, or your laptop choice in uh, you know, somewhat upgradable condition. But on the other hand, as we've learned here, these new modules aren't going to work with the old uh, notebooks. Maybe the old modules will with the new ones. We haven't been able to verify that. Um, but if you want to be a gamer on the go and don't want to worry so much about you know, having a big desktop rig to worry about, this seems all right. And at that price, 3050 with those specs, it's not bad, like considering what's inside that thing. Yeah, the the modular GPU is best for like I want to I want to get in on the ground floor with this, but I want the option to upgrade that GPU later once I've saved up. Uh, but I'm going to keep this laptop for a while, right? That's the module isn't like I will now be future proof forever because I can just keep swapping out because as we can see, uh, the R1 can't get the newer uh, Radeons uh, or or the RTX. Uh, that are offered for the R2, but yeah, nice, nice, nice looking specs. What could you possibly run on these gaming laptops that would take advantage of all of that, Scott? Uh, that is a classic transition for Tom Merritt. Uh, <laughs> Epic has announced its Unreal Engine 5. I'll bet that'll run on this. Uh, with a demo running on a PlayStation 5, interestingly enough, showing off its level of detail and photorealistic lighting, Unreal Engine's full launch will happen in late 2021 with support for current next-generation consoles, PC, Mac, iOS, and Android. Epic also announced it will let developers keep all royalties on the first $1 million in sales generated by games made with the Unreal, Unreal Engine before taking its 5%. Uh, that change is retroactive to January 1st. Epic is also releasing its free Epic Online Services platform, SDK, which lets developers add multi-platform management. What's amazing about this engine and I recommend people watch this thing in 4K on YouTube or somewhere with a good quality uh, cut of the video. Watch all nine minutes. Listen to it because they have a lot to say, but also there's some really cool spatial audio stuff going on. Your mind will be blown. We were all a little bit worried that this generation of new consoles uh, and, for that matter, new generation of PC games were not necessarily going to see a giant leap that we'd kind of hit the top of that curve of innovation and we were just sort of going to iterate from there. And in some ways that's true. But this is truly impressive. And someone's going to naysay to you and say, ah, oh, I don't know, demos are just demos. Who knows what it's like in the real world? Uh, they've been pretty consistent. Unreal 4, when it was shown off, people were blown away by that demo. And very quickly, the games looked just like it or better. So I think this is a huge day for people that are excited about fidelity 
and growth in that space. And if you want to really nerd out about the specs, they go pretty deep and why it looks as good as it does. Uh, the lighting, which they call Lumen, uh, the oh, I forgot the, what they call their new texture technology. Nanite. But, but they, they love the triangles, Tom. They talked about triangles mm -hmm. till their faces were blue. So if you like triangles, <laughs> that demo is for you. Yeah, man, uh, Nanite, which is the tool that virtualizes the geometry, Nanite. is impressive. Uh, Lumen uh, for the film quality source uh, light uh, is is just crazy. Like th these are these are delicious technologies. But as impressive as they are, I'm actually more impressed about uh, Epic staying ahead of the game. They made a, a big move when they made Unreal Engine available for free and said, we'll just take 5% of your sales. You never sell a game, it's fine. Uh, we'll just take a percentage of, of what you sell. Now they're increasing that and saying, look, if you don't sell a lot, like less than a million dollars, that's fine. We don't even want to bother with the accounting uh, for that. Only if big games, only million dollars in sales, will we bother taking the 5%. Uh, that's not going to lose on uh, Epic a lot of money, and it's going to build them a lot of goodwill. Yeah, they and it, uh, it's a. I think it's a really smart move for them because the ubiquity of the engine is what they want out of this. If everything is based on Unreal, and a lot of things already are, they're already the leader in the market. Others like Unity and others, they do their best, but Unreal kind of owns the engine market. This will just help solidify that. They're making money in lots of other ways now, Fortnite being <laughs> the biggest uh, generator they've made in a long time with their own games. So you're going to see more of their own development come out of this. Their store on PC is doing better than people expected. So yeah, they're going to be fine. And also their tech seems to be as cutting edge as you can get at the moment. And I, for one, am very excited. Yeah, and uh, we shouldn't shortchange that Epic Online Services, letting people do that cross-platform thing they, they do with Fortnite as an SDK as well. All right, All right, Facebook has agreed in San Mateo Superior Court to pay a total of $52 million as a class action lawsuit settlement to current and former content moderators to compensate them for mental health issues related to their moderation duties. So this is a combination of damages and also reparations, helping them buy treatments, uh, pay for treatment. So each of the 11,250 moderators in the class will receive a minimum of $1,000. About half may be eligible for additional compensation because the $1,000 is like spend it on whatever you want. We think you should spend it on treatment, but we won't bother to certify that. But if you have a diagnosis that is more complex, you could get additional compensation that would increase that amount to $1,500 to $6,000. And there's even certain qualifying diagnoses that could potentially receive up to $50,000 in damages. Now, like all class action lawsuits, the amounts may be reduced depending on the number of members of the class who apply and the number of people who qualify for those larger amounts. But Facebook isn't just stopping at money. They also agreed to changes to the moderation tools uh, and mental health care offerings, both for their full-time and contractor employments. And members of the class may now comment on this agreement. It's not done yet. The members get to say whether they like it before a judge rules on final approval by the end of the year. You know, when I first saw the story this morning, I was like, $1,000 for somebody who is, you know, jarred for life based on content that they saw is is not going to you know it will not fix anything however this is a good thing that facebook is doing it well our, our, the lawyers you know we're we're uh, it, to it do. Yeah. is being made is being forced to do but this this is a this is a good step in the right direction as far as not just you know giving people some some change to especially you know for healthcare, but to just bring awareness to the fact that this is a really hard job not everybody's cut out for it. Even the people that maybe are cut out for it the most are going to have residual issues. It's, 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 you know, it's, it's, it's tough stuff. Well, what's the solution? We've talked about it in the past. Like, all right, let's get the bots in there. Let's get AI to, you know, make sure that these humans don't have to do this anymore. It's too hard on us. Well, we're not there yet either. So, you know, and the people who are posting really bad content that moderators have to filter out of Facebook, they're not going away either. So, Again, it's kind of like, all right, well, this is a pretty good outcome, I, I suppose, but a very short step in a long journey. Yeah, they're screening applicants now for emotional resiliency. They're providing way more aggressive opportunities for psychological support, changing images and videos to black and white, muting audio in certain situations. This is a, uh, a crisis job. This is a very risky job to your mental health. They're finally recognizing that and treating it appropriately. Well, let's talk about buying a new tablet. Scott, I know you've got your fancy magic keyboard, but guess what? Amazon has updated its 8-inch Fire HD 8 tablet 
with a lot of new specs. The processor goes from 1.3 gigahertz to 2 gigahertz. RAM up from 1.5 gigabytes to 2 gigabytes. Storage doubles to either 32 or 64 gigabytes. And the port is now USB-C. The display starts at 1280 by 800. And battery life is estimated about 12 hours. That price also rose from $80 to $90, though you can buy two for $160. There's also a kid's edition that includes a kid-proof case, two-year replacement program, and free year of parental controls for $140. There's also a new Fire HD 8 Plus with 3 gigabytes of RAM and wireless Qi charging for $110. You can get that one bundled with a wireless charging dock for $140. I hope you're taking notes. You can order all the Fire HD tablets now and the L-Ship on June 3rd. Yeah, thankfully, we, we wrote it all down for you in our show notes at dailytechnewsshow.com. <laughs> we were talking about before the show in our production meeting, like, why are people so excited about these tablets? Because it's like all over the place today. Everybody's like, oh, new Fire tablets. And it came down to kids. Uh, Fire TV tablet, tablets in general, uh, are good for keeping kids busy. And the parental controls, especially that offering of a kid-proof case, very compelling. Yeah, these are also rugged. Um, they tend to take a beating. So if you're going to take a long trip, I don't know, a lot of people aren't doing that right now. But when you do, uh, you can have a bang around the van a little bit and get dropped a few times and that sort of thing. And that case certainly helps. So, yeah, it's it's perfect for those looking for that sort of thing. Spatial, I talked about Spatial Audio earlier. Now let's talk about Spatial, the company at Spatial.io, is making a virtual meeting room technology available for free on more platforms. Spatial was previously available for headsets like Microsoft's uh, HoloLens, Unreal, Magic Leap, uh, and will now be available on the iPhone, Android, and Oculus Quest, as well as the web. Spatial creates a 3D avatar that lets users in VR and AR devices move around in virtual meeting rooms and interact with objects. Uh, web and other phone users can see and hear what's happening but not grab objects in the world. Uh, this thing seems super cool and this morning on the morning show uh, or on the morning stream. Tom was there for his segment and we went ahead and went ahead and had our co-host, my co-host, uh, Brian Ibbett, make his own avatar, which you can just do online and then pulls it into the world and you log in with your Oculus Quest and boom, you're that guy. It's a little uncanny valley, but I was blown away by this. I think this might be a really nice step in the direction of, hey, we have need of a tool in VR and AR that's like for serious meetings and not just for goofing around or playing games. Yeah, this is this is interesting because you know the news hook here is that it's now free uh, before you had to pay for it, but also that they're making it accessible to folks who don't have specialized equipment. So if you don't have a HoloLens, if you haven't pay, paid a couple thousand dollars for that, uh, you can just sign up for this and use it on your phone. Now, as you mentioned, that means you're going to be a 2D screen. You're not going to get the full functionality, but that encourages adoption because the folks who have an Oculus Quest, Sarah Lane, for instance, uh, you might say, well, let's meet in here because the, a few of us will be able to collaborate and, and take advantage of this virtual world, and we won't leave people out. At least they'll be able to see what is going on and, and talk to us about it. Yeah, and it depends on what your meeting is about. You know, that kind of Brady Bunch grid mm -hmm. that we've all gotten used to is like, okay, well, that sometimes works fine, whether you have two people or, you know, 100 people in a meeting. But it often, it, maybe you're showing off something. Uh, maybe there, yeah, there's, I don't know, a little bit more of kind of a personal situation going on uh, that would benefit a, a lot more from this. The yeah. spatial stuff that I saw... It was hard for me not to be like, Ugh. I mean, look at the bodies. They look really bad. Like the rendering is bad. Like it's not 30 frames per second. But they I think have I'm the being, legs. Yeah, <laughs> that too. They're floating. This isn't real. That's not me. But I think that the, it, it is a step in the right direction of, listen, if virtual medians are going to become a thing that we all just deal with in the future, not even because we're all stuck at home, but because it just makes more sense for a lot of companies, you do want something that is beyond that Brady Bunch grid. And this is a really good example of where it is going. Yeah, yeah I, uh, I think so. I think so too. I just, I would, I would only say one other thing and that is that previous to this, there are plenty of things you can do this in, right? Lots of little meeting room things and game rooms and stuff where you can hang out and see avatars of each other and hear each other's voice, but they all look like garbage. And even <laughs> though this looks weird, this at least looks like people and the faces of the people you want to meet with. And I think you can get work done. So here, here's hoping that's true. Hey, folks, if you want to get all the tech headlines each day in about five minutes, be sure to subscribe to DailyTechHeadlines.com. 
Well, until we're all meeting virtually, uh, we're going to have to deal with meeting over Zoom, Skype, Meet, etc. And CNET's Allison Danisco Rayom has an article titled Zoom Etiquette. You've probably broken at least one of these video chat rules. Uh, so join us as we condemn everyone who's broken these rules and then suffer silently as we realize the one that we have broken. Uh, first of all, typing when not muted or other sounds like basically not muting yourself in a conference call and having the kids, you know, barking, the dogs, uh, you know, making noise uh, or vice versa. Uh, but but particularly, even if you don't have any other noisemakers around, just typing away, tappity tap. I know I'm the one who does this. I'm going to admit to this one right <laughs> off. Well, that's because you insist on having one of those, you know, real hard typey keyboards. I don't uh, know. I just type really loud too. <laughs> well, that too. I don't. I mean, ASDF. But, but, uh, but no. <laughs> it's funny because uh, that that first tip was I was like, oh no, the issue is somebody mutes themselves and then they forget to unmute themselves, and the that, rest of us are like, side. restart yeah. your computer. Oh my gosh, we're about yeah. to be live, kind of thing. So <laughs> it does go both ways. No, that's the corollary to this. Uh, not only <laughs> mute yourself, but also don't forget to unmute. Uh, or and and in a lot of these, you can turn on mute automatically, and in Zoom, you can like hold down the space bar to talk. Uh, or in like things like Discord, you can turn on the push to talk optionality or even have it just detect your voice. So you're muted unless it hears you start talk. So use that, use that feature. Also pay attention to what people can see. You don't want the camera pointed up your nostrils. You don't want distracting or even inappropriate things in your background on a poster. That's fine when you're home alone, but not in a business conference. Uh, you don't want them to see only half your face. Remember to dress appropriately. They can see what you're wearing. Uh, and the solution to this is just take a moment to determine the shot before you join a meeting. Look at what's in your background. Look at what people will see. And you might need to stand your camera or your laptop up on a box or some books. Uh, and pay attention to your lighting. You might want to move the lamp around or close or open the blinds. Yeah, also, I mean, don't, oh, don't go feel ahead, bad. I was going to say, don't feel bad if at right at first this stuff doesn't come naturally to you. You don't feel like you thought of all these tips. Because I was just noting earlier in our production meeting, and I'll say it again, in the last month and a half, I have seen some celebrities who normally mm. are, you know, the Slick. people we all look at Radiant. go, wow, we're mm -hmm. as good as them. And you see them on their on their webcams, not really following many of these rules. Whew, they're just like us. They're regular old people. And my point of that is, is not to say, oh, man, with the wrong lights, these sure just look like a bunch of scrubby regulars. My point is they don't know either, right? Like they're used to having a crew that works this out for them. Um, and so they're all kind of – everybody's kind of learning how to be home production yeah, people. Yeah all of a sudden. And so these tips are, are great for that. Well, well and one, and one way to stay of... ahead of that is to test things ahead of time. That's another one of these tips, which is like, if you're going to have to share your screen to do a test call with a colleague or a relative and figure out how to share your screen, don't waste the time in the meeting, figuring out how to share the screen. Right. I think, um, you know, it's easy to sort of be like, well, okay, I mean, who really cares, right? You're trying to get your point across in the meeting. Yeah, you don't want to be, you know, uh, you know, yelling at your kids in the background and and uh, not muting yourself when that all happens. But there is a lot of there's a lot of aesthetic stuff that does help. For example, on this show right now, I'm wearing a top bun that's kind of cut off. Does anyone care? No, not for our purposes. But what if I was having a meeting with some people who were like, I was going to collab with on, I don't know, some hair dye line. Like you kind of have to like read the room, you know, know mm -hmm. your audience, know what they expect. And I cannot tell you how many people recently, either in jest or, you know, for serious, were like, hey, Sarah, what kind of lights do you use for your podcast? Because I'm doing a lot of remote calls right now and I want to look as good as possible. Like, that is that is a hot market. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The other thing to remember, and this one's going to sound like you're going to want to mock people, but you will find yourself forgetting this at some point. They can see you. Zoom particularly <laughs> puts everybody up on the screen, and even though you're not talking, everyone can see you. And unlike a conference room, you don't know who's looking at you. So don't be eating or drinking or smoking uh, in, in the middle of the meeting. <laughs> Wait uh, because, a second. Hold because, it right there. I can't smoke. Not anymore. Not during the oh, meeting, man. Sarah. You take right. it outside. Oh, uh, tech, or or probably sense. more often, uh, it's the person who's looking at their phone. 
uh, you know, and and again, if you're in a conference room and you and everybody's looking at the speaker, that's one thing. But remember, everybody's looking at everyone in these meetings. Yeah. So if you're sitting right. there like yawning, looking, looking at your phone, like folks can see you. So turn the phone over so it doesn't tempt you. Yeah. Uh, or or explain like, oh, I'm checking the numbers for the quarterly sales, right? And just be like, oh, okay, that's why they're doing that. Yeah, the, a, it's it's a whole keep in mind thing. Go ahead, Scott. Yeah. I have a couple of, uh, or I have one tip for parents. So I've been doing this long enough to know that sometimes your kids are going to bust in the room and they're going to go, especially right now, like during the pandemic, they're home with you, you, you're home with them and they want to come bug you. So if they come busting into the room, my, my, uh, my advice is this, try to explain beforehand. It's good that dad needs his time in here and know not what to, when to come in here. If that door is shut, don't come in, uh, have your rules. But if they do come in, just go ahead and embrace it for a second. It's okay. Let them kind of wander in like that weird CNN or that BBC video where that guy was trying to talk and his kids came wandering in and made faces and stuff. Sometimes you just got to like, all right, that's great. Say hi to everybody. Okay, now back. That's the only way they're going to learn. So little parent yeah, yeah. tip. It's going to happen. It's okay. It's a weird time, but they'll know better next time. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's that's a really good tip of like, just explain what you're doing. Like if if you have an emergency, you know, if 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 the uh, the do the dog's throwing up or the kid's taking a pee uh, in the middle of the hallway, just say like, I gotta deal with something, you guys. Sorry, and go. Don't just ghost. <laughs> The, just, the example in the article was the exact opposite of that. Like, the kids aren't here in the hallway, the dog is, but the kid didn't. That's vomit. the way I wrote it in my notes to myself. Yeah. And then no, I... but, 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 <laughs> no, I'm with you. Like, there are certain times where you're just like, sorry, I need a minute, please. You know, I'll yeah. be right yeah. back. Or I, I have to, you know, I have to ghost on you. And then, you yeah. know, don't go. just wander off from your meeting. <laughs> uh, like, tell someone in chat what's going on or excuse yourself or something like that. And um, so much yeah. of this also is just like, let's say we were all in a meeting, uh, you know, uh, around a big table and I got a phone call and I was like, Ooh, this is important guys. Be right back. Same thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same and thing. A lot of it's just being aware. Uh, you know, you, if you've been on teleconferences before you say your name, same in a video conference, people don't necessarily know who you are. It's like, Hey, Tom Merritt here. I wanted to say this, or, uh, this is a more advanced tip. Look at the camera, not at your screen when you're talking to people, because they will see you looking at them. You're looking at the screen as if you're looking at them. It looks like you're looking down. So that's that's a nice one if you just want to put a little, little cherry on top of your video conference presentation. You know what's a cherry on top of our whole show? Our community in Discord. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. You can join by linking to a Patreon account at patreon.com slash DTNS. Let's check out the mailbag. We got a good one from Caden, who actually wrote into us on Patreon, but, you know, mailbag nonetheless. Thank you, Caden, who says, just wanted to add a quick message to let Sarah know, and Scott's on here too, so it works for Scott as well, about Supernatural VR on the Oculus Quest. It's an awesome workout game, has Beat Saber beat by a mile. It's fun, it looks good, with quality music, and can be a super intense workout. Yeah, it seems like a very cool thing. I've not tried it. So there's a demo and it costs like 20 bucks a month. That would be my only yeah. uh, warning is to make sure that it's going to have everything you're going to want out of your out of your workout to pay that. A lot of people pay more than that to go to a gym. So if it's giving you that and more, maybe this is your gym membership and cancel any time sort of thing. Um, but people and should that's know that exactly what it's priced at. Yeah. Like 20 bucks a month. I mean, I, I'm sort of like, am I going to be able to hold weights, but I would be holding mm. my, you know, like quest like that doesn't really make a lot of sense to me, but I'm not knocking it cause I haven't tried it. Um, mm. I have looked at some reviews and everyone is like, this is awesome. Wish the price was more like $5 a month. So it's called super natural, but it's yeah. not about vampires. It's about exercise. No. That's it's not right. about brother. Okay. It's not about hot brothers. Making nice yourself car, supernaturally right? jacked. <laughs> no. Got it. Exactly. exactly. In a perfect world. <laughs> hey, shout out to patrons in our master and grandmaster levels, including Ragnald Varmal, Reed Fisher, and Paul Reese. Also, thanks to Scott Johnson for being with us today. Scott, what's new? Well, as I gaze into my camera using good etiquette, I would like to say the following. Um, this is funny that this happened this week and that I was on the show where we talked about it because my comic strip, Fred and Can at fredandcan.com, dealt with this exact issue, and we didn't plan it or anything. I had no idea this was going to happen. So I'm going to recommend that. Go check it out at fredandcan.com. Fred thinks it's an okay idea to show up for a job interview, teleconference, with just his underwear on and a nice uh, tie and shirt on top. And 
hilarity happens. So check it out. That's Fred and Can over at fredandcan.com. You can also find it at frogpants.com where everything else about me is there. So go check it out. Hey, folks, uh, there's all kinds of things you can do to support the show. Of course, if you have the means, uh, supporting us directly through Patreon loses the ads and gives you a bunch of extra content. Uh, but if you don't, review the show. Uh, and in fact, I know some of you Android folks are like, why do I got to review it on iTunes? I don't use iTunes, but it's just one of the best ways to get the word out. So if you can sneak in there and leave some stars, uh, if you want to leave us a message of what you think about the show in there too, that's cool. We love reading those as well. Uh, but you just leaving the stars helps boost our availability, uh, in that segment of the audience. So, so you could be like kind of a sneak attack spy going into the iTunes universe and leaving a review to help us out. So please do that uh, or in your podcast app uh, on Mac OS, iOS, or even just on the web. Thank you for doing that. Our email address is feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com, and we want your emails, so keep them coming. Really make my morning. We're live Monday through Friday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 2030 UTC, and you can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. Back tomorrow with Chris Mancini joining us to talk about theaters and Justin Robert Young. See you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>